They're a great set of seventh arpeggios that sit really well on the neck, uh, which I thought I'd run through this week. I think I've covered them before, but I really wanted to focus in on them because I find them really useful. They're something that I use all the time. Now, what I've done, particularly for this, rather than playing through all five of them, uh, because they all fo follow the same basic structure, I've created a set of tabs and I've charted them out and I'll stick uh, the PDF of that in the description field. So download that because that really has uh, a substantial part of uh, information on it. But they all follow the same basic structure, which is uh, two notes on, on one string, then one, then two notes, and then one. And they all fit really nicely under the hand. So what I thought I'd do is just focus this lesson on the B minor 7th arpeggio. I'd just play through that and show you what I mean with that. But this applies equally to the major 7th, the dominant 7th, the minor 7 flat 5 and the diminished 7th as well. They all, they all sit around, use that same basic structure. Um, so once I've played through one, you can kind of apply the same principles to the other. So that's why you need the PDF. Anyway, let's start with the, uh, the minor 7th. Running through the shape then, we have two notes on the E string, one note on the B string, two notes on the G string, one note on the D, two notes on the A string. And if you've downloaded the PDF, you'll see that I've actually charted this out so you can... You can see how I'm playing this shape. And I've actually charted out all, all five arpeggios. So you've got the major seventh as well, the, the dominant seventh, the minus and flat five, and the diminished seventh, all, all based around this same kind of shape with two notes on one string, one note on the next. <clears throat> this structure is actually very similar to the G major ninth I'm playing. So, if I play that over the same pattern, you'll see what I mean. So here's... You can hear how that sounds very similar to this. And the reason is, the, the only difference between the G major 9th and the B minor 7th arpeggio is that the G major 9th has the addition of the G note, the root note. So that means you can actually play the B minor 7th over a G major 7th type chord or a G major type chord and it'll sound good. And if you've checked out my previous video on, on arpeggios and polychords then you'll kind of understand why, why these two fit together so well. So the reason why I like these shapes in particular is that they do sit really nicely under the hand. And, and they work particularly well for legato type licks because the, the notes are nicely separated. Uh, as you're playing through them, you'll kind of see what I mean. It's not like you're playing a, a major chord where you've got three notes that all sit on the same fret. These space nicely across the frets as you move between the strings, which, which really does help when you're playing legato type licks. So what, I, what I've done as well is I've, I've attached uh, some very basic legato type, type exercises to that PDF as well. So when you get hold of that, you can see what I'm playing through. But these, these are basically descending and ascending in groups of four, which is a useful sort of basic exercise that you can use to build um, legato licks and things like that. So, so let me play through it and, and I'll show you what I mean. So just playing through really slowly to start with um, and as I say download the tabs because they'll, they'll really show you what I'm playing here. But the left hand to start with is descending in groups of four. And the right hand really is trying to control those lower strings to stop them vibrating. And coming back up the right hand plays an even more important role because the left hand can't contribute to any string dampening at all, so it's all right hand work. And if I did that without my right hand at all, you'd hear what I mean. So 
So that so that's the exercise. And as I say, I've tabbed this out for all five arpeggios, so you can go through it yourself, try each each one of the shapes, and see how they fit under your hands. So that's it. Hopefully that was useful for you. Um, actually, there's a guy on YouTube called Rick Graham who who can do some really amazing things with these kinds of uh, shapes. I, I definitely recommend you checking out some of his legato stuff because he does make some significant use of this kind of pattern. But anyway, like I say, hopefully that was useful for you and we'll chat next time. Goodbye.